Yo, what's good, YouTube, man? It's Gabriel, just another fan TV. Back at you another video. Hey, look, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe on all the videos, share the content, get out there more, to more Ravens fans, all right? So the Ravens win last night, 19 to 17. Uh, good game. I didn't really want to get my thoughts last night just because I was a primetime game, so it was a little late. Uh, come back here in the morning and, you know, get my thoughts or anything like that. Victory Monday, so it's a good day to talk about the Ravens and what happened. So I want to talk about some stand-up performers and then kind of recap the game and what happened. So first off, stand-up performers, we're going to go with Devin DuVernay, man. Devin DuVernay did a lot last night all over the field, and the Ravens actually got creative in using them, lined them up in the back for some. These are kind of the things that we've been saying uh, well, well, before I even started the YouTube channel that, that, you know, like Ravens fans have been saying, like, Devin DuVernay can play a Debo Samuel-like role. No, is he Debo Samuel? He's not. We're not saying that. No. But their skill sets are comparable. So it was good to see the Ravens kind of lean on that and really use it and really use his versatility because um, obviously, you know, Rashad Bateman was out, things of that nature. So the Ravens needed another guy to step up. And Devin DuVernay stepped up, whether it was uh, running the ball, catching the ball. I really like what I saw from him last night. And um, he's been doing it this entire year. He's been doing this entire year, man. Uh, we can't really ignore what Devin DuVernay is doing for the offense. So three carries, 24 yards, uh, seven targets, five catches, 54 yards. Okay. And he had a long bomb to him that was, I'm going to say, it's a little bit of a miss from Lamar Jackson, you know, by, by a couple yards, very, very close. But so he, his his 54 yards could have turned into 100 plus in a touchdown. So a big time game from Devin DuVernay. Okay. Uh, next guy, uh, Mark Andrews, man. Mark Andrews dominated the game and kind of in segments, uh, a little bit in the first half, but mainly in that in that third end of the third fourth quarter when the Ravens really needed them, they were going to Mark Andrews, man. So eight catches, eighty nine yards, one touchdown off of ten targets. Um, he's him. He's him, man. He's a guy that is the second best tight end in the NFL at the very least. Um, you know, you can make an argument between him and Kittle, who's first. Not Kittle, I'm sorry, Kelsey. Uh, who's first, but he's top two. He's top two. You know, everyone is slicing, man. Travis Kelsey, Mark Andrews, those are the guys, you know what I mean? So Ravens are are fortunate to have a guy like him on their roster. Uh, I'm not going to hear any talk about Mark Andrews being overrated, not having reliable hands, this, whatever. No, I'm not hearing that. He catches everything. When the Ravens need him, when they need a big play, they know where to go. 89 is going to be open, all right? So, um... That's my stand-up pitch on the offensive side of the ball. And also, shout-out to Ronnie Stanley making his return back. Um, you know, they rotated him and McCarry out at, at, at tackle. But shout-out to Ronnie Stanley. He held it down when he was in, okay? Um, on defense, Jason Pierre-Paul. Jason Pierre-Paul was stopping the run. And what I like most importantly, right, Him. this goes for him and the entire defensive line. The Ravens have tall defensive line. We're talking about guys 6'4 and up. You know, there's a 6'7 Brent Urban. There's a 6'8 Calais Campbell. No, Justin Matter BK is not sure. I think he might be what six one six two something like that. So they got their hands in the passing lanes last night, and that's something I've been talking about for the Ravens since training camp. Is you got these tall guys on the on the defensive line? The Bengals want to do this short, quick passing game, which they were doing all night. Get your hands up, and J.C. Pierre Paul had jobs where he tipped multiple passes. Um, he was getting sacks. He was just an all-around menace out there, and I love what I saw from Jason Pierre-Paul. Now, we got to say that this offseason, we might not like everything Eric DaCosta did, and I'm on the train right there with y'all. Uh, it was a lot of questionable decisions and things of that nature, right? But we got to give credit where credit is due. Jason Pierre-Paul was a great signing. I'm not saying that took like some, some type of genius to go ahead and sign Jason Pierre-Paul, but it was a good move, right? It was a needed move. Honestly, I wish it could have happened earlier. He could have just rehabbed with the Ravens until he was right. But that being said, I'm glad he's here. He's helping out majorly. Hopefully, we can get Justin Houston back pretty soon, and now we can really re-up that, that pass rush, okay? Um, and then the last guys I want to give a shout-out to for the stand-up performance is Marcus Peters and Pepe Williams. These are two guys who were dogs in coverage last night, man. Absolute dogs in coverage. And then what I absolutely like is Pepe Williams, right, is not afraid to throw his body around and tackle. Pepe Williams is all of 5'9", 5'10", 180 pounds. I see him bringing Brown down tight ends, any kind of wide receiver, running backs. It don't matter. If you got the ball, he's willing to hit you. 
And that's a beautiful trait. Not all corners are built like that, especially not all small corners, right? And then you get to Marcus Peters. Marcus Peters, to me, I don't know, maybe I'm just seeing him differently, but he's he's tackling the best I think I've ever seen Marcus Peters tackle. And that's just not just this week. This is throughout the season. He's actually putting in the effort to bring a guy to the ground because that was kind of his thing. Like, you know, he was a cornerback. I want to get my hands on the ball. I just want to intercept passes, things like that. That's, that. that's what I do. But this year, I'm taking, I'm seeing him take on that responsibility of bringing guys to the ground. Hayden Hurst, uh, Tyler Boyd on that on that fake, you know, you know, Philly special thing they tried to run. Um, you know, this ball he did miss he did miss a tackle. You know what I mean? So I'm not saying like it wasn't he he was absolutely perfect. Nobody is. Um, but Marcus Marcus Peters, uh, Pepe Williams, I love what those two guys did last night. Uh, Marlo had a good game too. He had a tough assignment on Chase, but he had a really good game. So you know, I'm not I'm not uh leaving him out or anything like that. But the standout, Marcus Peters, Pepe Williams. I love what I saw from those two guys. All right. Um, so those are my standout performers for the game. You know, Duvernay, Andrews, Pierre Paul, the Ravens defensive line in general as far as tipping those passes, and Marcus Peters, Pepe Williams. Those, those are my guys. All right. Let me know your guys in the comments, but I do want to give a quick recap of the game. Uh, just talk about what I saw uh throughout the four quarters. You know what I mean? Uh the Ravens. Like I said, they used Devonay as a, Duvernay as a, uh, a playmaker on offense. I thought that was beautiful. Um, I thought it was interesting that they decided to rotate Ronnie Stanley in and out the game. Um, I don't know how I feel about that, but I know it's his first week back. He's on a snap count. Harbaugh said that's going to continue to happen. Uh, same thing with J.K. Dobbins, which I'm not a fan of either. To me, J.K. Dobbins was rolling, and we didn't get enough J.K. Dobbins last night. Keen Drake probably had his best game as a Raven, but I still would have preferred to see J.K. Dobbins in those roles where Keen Drake was in. All right. Um, so like I said, yeah, first quarter, Kendrick, I mean, sorry, J.K. Dobbs had a great run, but Ravens kind of had some penalties that killed the drive early on. And, um, they, you know, they got, they got, a, they got behind the chains a little bit, but I will say this. All right. The first quarter, the offense did look good. All right. Uh, they moved the pocket a lot. Got Lamar Jackson out of the pocket. Um, a lot of misdirection, things like that. They keep the Bengals defense off guard. They just didn't really finish in the first quarter. So, you know, that is what it is. Um, the defense, good pressure to start the game, high energy, JC Pierre Paul sack, JC Pierre Paul run stop. Talked about that. Ravens shut out the Ravens in the first quarter up 3-0. Um, and it kind of felt like how, how pretty much all of these home games feel. The Ravens jump out early, uh, energy on both sides, looking good. Even though they don't score a touchdown in the first quarter, they, they're looking good. Second quarter, we get that Mark Andrews touchdown, money, money Andrews. Um they did a lot of option last night too, where it got Lamar outside, and he he never he never pitched the option. He kept it pretty much every single time, but it was just the uh, the threat of having that. I thought that was good. So, um, like I said, Keenan Drake had a good run. Um, Lamar threw an interception to Von Bell uh, when he missed uh, Demarcus Robinson. Um, that throw is a miss, is an overthrow. Um, it happens, but um, you know I think Lamar. I don't want to say happy feet, but a lot of times when Lamar misses, you can just look at his feet and tell what's wrong. Uh, he was trying to avoid a rush a little bit, and he couldn't really get his feet corrected all the way, so ball sailed on him, all right? Um, pressure started to come in a little bit more in the second quarter. Uh, the offense kind of slowed down a little bit after coming, coming, going out to that 10-0 lead, and it kind of allowed the Bengals to get back in the game, all right? Even though Josh Mines had a sack, uh, Pepe Williams out there tackling great, but this this Bengals run game, which has been struggling, kind of got going this game, really. Uh, Bengals, I think they said Joe Mixon was averaging 2.7 yards coming into this game. And he left this game with 14 carries, 78 yards, 5.6 yards a carry, okay? Even Shamaji P. Ryan had three carries for 17 yards for an average of 5.7, all right? So the run defense, if I had to say about anything in this game, wasn't where we wanted it to be. But the Raiders defense played well, so I'm not saying anything like that. They played really well, all right? Um, Hayden Hurst had a good game. You know, he got his touchdown, got a couple of nice catches. Um, now, I will say this has come a little bit of a trend. Now, last week, they allowed that two-minute drive at the end of half, and this week, they do the same thing, all right? Um, so, like I said, now the Ravens was a little bit of steam, like I said. Now it's 10-10 going into halftime. Third quarter, um, the offense struggled, man. The offense struggled. Big time touchdown to Duvernay, missed. Uh, Tylen Wallace on the fourth down, that's a miss. We can say Tylen Wallace slowed down a little bit, but he's open by like 10 yards. You know what I mean? And But I will say this. There was pressure right there from Lamar Jackson. Had made him rush to throw a little bit. 
it's still a throw you would like to see him make. Just kind of lay it out there. You really didn't even have to throw it uh, leading him. You could really, really could just throw it at him. It was nobody around him. You know, he got wide open. Um, Ravens can't take advantage of that. So um, I will talk about the defense real quick in the third quarter. Patrick Queen interception. This is uh, this might sound crazy, right? To me, this is Patrick Queen's best play of his career. When they show what Joe Burrow saw with Patrick Queen, Joe, this is this is what Patrick Queen does. He looks, he sees Jamar Chase running into his area. He looks for him. He runs right to him, turns in front of him, and sits down, makes the interception. Patrick Queen made a read in coverage to make that play. That was a beautiful play. That's how you play linebacker in coverage. Read your entire surroundings. And I love that Patrick Queen did that. So I'm happy for him. I'm happy for the Ravens. That was a big time play by Patrick Queen. Um, the offense really couldn't get take advantage of that, though. You know, they end up on the next try, kind of stalling out, making it 13 10. Um, let's see. Oh, Bengals, wide receiver screens all die, especially to Jamar Chase. Tyler Boyd got a couple, but they, they made it a, a real emphasis to get Jamar Chase the ball. But if we're being honest, Jamar Chase, 12 targets. Seven catches, 50 yards. I'll take that all day. Ravens defense played really well on Jamar Chase, okay? Um, they had that one drive where pass interference on Marcus Peters. Excuse me, Kyle Hamilton with a flag. Uh, you know, like I said, Marcus Peters stopped at the Philly special. Uh, but then on third down, what I noticed what the Ravens were doing was it'd be third down, eight, ten, whatever. They played this soft coverage. And a lot of Bengals to get a lot of yards. Now, in the first half, it worked out, right? A couple tackles were made by, you know, Peters and, and Williams to stop it, save it, save it was 10 yards, and stop the guy short, fourth and two. You know what I mean? But then, then they do it in the end of this third quarter, right? Jamar Chase gets a, gets, gets a catch that's maybe 12 yards. Now, now the Bengals are at the inch line, and they decide to go for it, all right? But the Ravens come up with a big-time stop. The uh, Bengals try to run a little shovel pass, um, Ravens been doing that lately, so I guess they're they're on it. They're, they're used to seeing it now, and um, yeah, they stop it. So big big time play right there, man. Big time play. Fourth quarter, um, Lamar Lamar turns it up in the fourth quarter. All right, Lamar turns it up. We're talking about a great throw to Andrews. He's about to get hit by two players. Layers it over top of two defenders. Mark Andrews right on the sideline. Big time throw. Another great throw to Duvernay. He's running outside the pocket. Hits Duvernay on the sideline. Another good play. Um, I made a note about not enough JK. Uh, Tyler Linderbaum got hurt, came back. Uh, let's see. Oh, and the Ravens. Hey, listen, everybody. The Ravens decide to take the three. They got down the field. They felt like they were going to go for it. Took the delay game. Only moved it back five yards. They were in, you know, the field goal was a chip shot. And it's, it's Justin Tucker anyway. So um, they go 13, uh, sorry, 16 10. You know what I mean? Um, so for the defense. Still, still tipping passes on the D line. Still playing that. Bengals still running wide receiver screens. Still getting good yards off of them. Ravens might have stopped one wide receiver screen that I can really remember. And that was the Tyler Boyd off a good, a really good tackle. Okay, I thought Malik Harrison played well. He made some tackles. Um, but yeah, you know, back shoulder to Jamar Chase on Marlon Humphrey is a tough play for Marlon, bro. Really tough play. But he was good the entire game. Joe Burrow, QB sneak, 17, 10, two minutes left, okay? Sorry, 17, 16, excuse me, two minutes left. The Ravens just need a field goal here, man. And Lamar Jackson puts the team on his back. Big time throws, Andrews when they try to zero blitz. Um, then also, the Ravens use Lamar Jackson's uh, running ability in a two-minute drill, okay? Uh, a couple of big time runs, especially on that third and one at the end of the game, so that, you know, the Bengals didn't have any more timeouts left, and it was pretty much... The same scenario last week where the team runs down the entire clock. You got to watch them kick the game with a field goal in um, in a not really difficult situation. 43 yards for Tucker last week. I think, you know, the, you know, the Bills could pretty much kick the uh, old school extra point last week versus us. So, but this week we put the Bengals in a situation and the Ravens come out with a dub, man. 19-17. Big time game for the Ravens. Um, I like what I saw out there from the team. They fought. It was an AFC North game. AFC North game. They're not pretty. What they saw last year with the Bengals putting up all these points and stuff like that, that ain't AFC North football. It's really not. It was an anomaly because uh, our whole secondary was injured. This is more like what I think we'll see from these Ravens-Bengals games going forward. Tough, slug it out. Obviously, you know, sometimes you might have an offensive showdown. 
offensive shootout, but Wayne is going to be like this. Um, I do want to say the Ravens are going to miss Marcus Williams for a couple of weeks. John Harbaugh announced that he has a dislocated wrist, and he's going to miss some significant time with that, okay? So that's a big-time blow. Uh, but overall, a good game for the Ravens. Offense, defense, I think, played well. Um, you want to see the offense keep going, have a little bit more rhythm. But for the main part, I'm not mad at what the offense did last night, all right? Um, so that's it, man. That's that's the recap. Let me know your thoughts in the comments about the game. Give me your stand-up performance, everything like that, all right? Uh, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, man. It's your boy Gabriel. Just another fan TV. I'm out.